Hello everybody, Evidence here. Um, I gotta apologize in advance for making this video unedited in anger actually. <laughs> um, it has come to my attention that G-Man actually believes that he won the debate between him and Dragnet regarding macroevolution being a science or not and uh, even by him posting the video on GTV which I will link to and uh, making that claim you know in, in the title it says is macroevolution science people on the fence I, mean, I know that most people that subscribe to him are atheists but people on the fence uh, Christian people on the fence might think that, oh, well, there is an issue here. Scientists don't agree and whatever. So regarding that, he actually won the debate. Um, on every other account, he lost. Uh, first of all, it's a false question. It's not even a debate. I mean, <laughs> the scientific... Uh, theory of evolution is scientific by default you know um, so it's not even a debate you can have a discussion about it you can have disagreement about it and you can certainly raise question about it but it isn't a debate a discussion at most um, so I just had to make this video pointing out the errors, uh, as you will see, um, G-Man asks some questions. Most of them aren't even great questions. Most of them are faulty because it doesn't understand evolution. And I can say that with confidence because I have spoken to him in private. And uh, Dragnet answers to the best of his ability. Uh, I don't think that GMN nor Dragnet has a degree in science regarding evolution. Uh, I'm not so sure about Dragnet. Uh, he could correct me if I'm wrong. I certainly don't have a degree. But even though I've taken some classes, read a lot of books, attended some seminars, but I don't have a degree. Uh, but I, but I can read scientific literature, and this is just a farce. This is just a snippet of the whole debate, the whole discussion. Um, so, without further ado, uh, let's go on with it. My next question, I believe this is question number nine, uh, Chris, right? Okay. My next question, uh, um, Dragna, is where were you? when dinosaurs evolved into the next intermediate um, form? Uh, I did not exist during that time. No no human or mammal uh, existed during that time period. Huh, that's an interesting thing. My one minute um, rebuttal to that is, is, since you was not there, then I have to conclude that there's a certain amount of faith that a dinosaur evolved into anything. Did you guys hear that? Because Dragnut wasn't around 65 million years ago, we have to take it by faith that dinosaurs evolved into anything. <laughs> Who even argues like that? And how is that a rebuttal? And how is it an interesting claim that humans weren't around 65 million years ago? If it's just a claim, okay, where were you, G-Man, 65 million years ago? riding a dinosaur <laughs> it's 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 so stupid it's actually not even worth addressing <laughs> um dragon are you aware that the thing that, that the things that we observe um that that we observe things going extinct but we never see anything forming any living organisms forming like for example uh uh dinosaurs we know that that because of the fossils that we have that these animals existed and they went extinct. However, we have never seen a dinosaur evolve into anything. So how do you feel about that? 
Well, I, well, actually, we know what happened to the dinosaurs since we still have their descendants here to this day. Um, since we found a transitional form of Arche Archaeopteryx, we know what, what happened to them. Um, if you look at Archaeopteryx, it, it looks literally like a cross between a bird and a dinosaur. Uh, in order to substantiate that claim, uh, we would have to say, well, okay, well, if these ferocious creatures turned into something like chickens, where's the evidence for that? Well, interestingly enough, um, we can actually uh, activate some atavisms within chickens to make them grow teeth. Now, if that's interesting because we can't just throw genetic material at them and then produce, you know, Velociraptor. Um, the information would have had, well, as you guys say, information would have had to been there in the first place for us to uh, tweak just very slightly in order to activate uh, some of these latent uh, features. So again, it just go back to genetic evidence where this is something that we now know. Actually, uh, one of the technical advisors to the Jurassic Park series, uh, he is working on a project now to activate some of these atavisms to revert chickens back to their ancestral forms, which the dinosaurs. Okay, my next question is gonna involve a screen share. I don't have a follow-up for that. Of course, you don't have a follow-up or a rebuttal to that one. Uh, so Jim essentially says that we see humans Animals and plants die all the time, but we never see anything evolve. Uh, okay, uh, and then Dragnut shows him Archaeopteryx. Uh, it's a feather dinosaur uh, with uh, clear feet and hands, so to speak, but they are, but they have wings. Um, so. We can infer from that, of course, uh, if we look at chickens or any bird today, that they are very similar regarding the feet, regarding the feathers. Um, they don't have teeth, but funny enough, if you poke the right gene in a bird, they can produce teeth. So the question isn't... I mean, Jim doesn't seem to be that interested in the science behind evolution, actually. He just tries to find uh, holes and poke the holes. So the question Jim should be asking, what is the alternative to Archaeopteryx? I mean, how could that be? If we know through DNA and genetics that we share a common ancestor, isn't that an inference that you, you, that you can make? How can you have a, a half dinosaur, feathered dinosaur 65 million years ago, or whatever the age Archaeopteryx is, and then have birds today? But uh, Jim and don't accept that, does he? Um, I have two questions left, right, Chris? I believe. All right, so let me uh, screen share here real quick. And I like to ask you a question. I, the reason why I got to screen share this drag is because um, because of these past conversations that we've had. Okay. Okay. Now, you you just said that that we you know the dinosaur turning into a chicken, right? And we know that 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 this could be possible because you know a chicken can grow teeth, right? So, are you now saying that a dinosaur will become a non-dinosaur over a long period of time? Well, it's still considered. Uh, well, what, so let, let me address this. Well, I, I was very specific when I said Velociraptor because it. Uh, that particular kind of dinosaur uh, was the progenitor, one of the potential progenitors to current day uh, fowl. So when we say dinosaur, that's technically a, a paraphyletic clade that includes a lot of stuff. So we have to be very specific with what we're referencing here. Uh, how we classify dinosaurs also falls in line as to how we classify chickens, because if you, if you look at uh, I don't know any of these funky charts that shows how we classify things. They are a part of that same clade because they are descendants of the dinosaurs, particularly the Velociraptor kind. Okay, I'm gonna refer to the moderator on this. Uh, Chris, uh, I didn't ask about classifications. I asked them about a dinosaur. Will a dinosaur become a non-dinosaur? But your question did uh, dinosaur versus non dinosaur can be considered a form of classification. And I think that that's what he was addressing by being more specific about the example that he used. So that's why I let it slide. Okay. So my one minute response to that is, is again, I think right now is confusing classifications 
with a direct question regarding a specific animal. Okay, I'm asking him like, uh, will a T. Rex become a non T. Rex? Will a Triceratops become a non Triceratops? And he knew that, and I believe that he did that to try to get out of trouble there. But it's like, uh, like I said, it's all good. But do you want um, do you want to give him an opportunity to address the way that you reframe the question? Sure, no problem. Go ahead. Okay. Oh my word, <laughs> that was painful. Uh, so G-Man regurgitates the old uh, dinosaur turn into a non-dinosaur. And Dragonut tries to explain to him that that is just a matter of classification. Uh, if you were born 65 million years ago and you lived up till today, you would call birds dinosaurs. It's just a name. It's just what we call them. Uh, G-Man doesn't accept that, of course. He's not interested in science and the actual facts. Uh, so he complains. And then the moderator, Chris, Christopher Marty, has to correct him, getting back on the track, and uh, explain why um, Dragnut actually was addressing the point. And then... Um, of course, in the old G-Man style, he accuses Dragnut to deliberately avoiding the question to get out of trouble. So, <laughs> how about that for a display of asking a question, sort of a faulty question actually, but nevertheless getting a correct answer, a correct rebuttal from two people nevertheless, and still don't understanding the issue uh, oh my word it's unbelievable just unbelievable so if you're asking if the physical characteristics of this particular creature change then the answer is yes I, I think that's what you were trying to get at uh, when you call something a dinosaur when you call something a cup a chair a table that's a label that you've attached to an object now that object has certain characteristics but when you use a, a label that's a very broad label because a velociraptor is not the same thing as an allosaurus. An allosaurus is not the same thing as a triceratops. A triceratops is not the same thing as a mosasaurus. They all have different characteristics. In my original question, I narrowed it down to a specific kind of dinosaur with the characteristics that we know were conserved to the current day fowl. Okay. Uh, uh... My, I guess my last question is going to be this. Um, uh, I have to figure out how to say this. Um, my last question is going to be, because I'm, I'm thinking about what you just said, believe it or not. So I'm letting it like process in my head. So, um, yeah, I do hope that you think about what Dragnet said. <laughs> the, the funny thing is that I have talked to G-Man in private and I have pointed him to videos where they explain this issue and I have even explained this issue. Let's say that if you take a picture of your father's 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 father and so on all the way back to the fish or whatever, it doesn't matter, and you line the pictures up side by side Wherever you go on this long chart and you pick up a picture and look at it, the picture before that one and the picture after that one looks pretty much the same. But if you go further back in time and, and you pick up a picture, you see a different creature, a different person, a different kind, because you've gone so far back, perhaps millions of years, that that picture doesn't resemble the first picture that you picked up. But just like the first picture that you picked up, the one before and the one after that picture look pretty much the same, even if you went 15 million years back in time and you pick up that picture, then that picture doesn't look like, like the one you picked up before, but the one before and after just that picture they look just very similar. And that is why I, I have tried to explain to Jim that actually I am the transitional form between my son and my father. 
if all three of us were to be fossilized and they will dig up, dig us up, they would say that, oh, it's, it's the same kind. Of course we're the same kind. But I still am the transitional form between my son and my father. And that is what, I'm, what I think that Dragnas was trying to explain about this classification and the speci speciation. But of course, Jim doesn't listen. So, yeah, continue. My last question is, can you provide um, uh, a list of, uh, and, and like I said, you can Google it, you can, because I asked you to prepare yourself for this one. Uh, um, can, can you, in a video form, I don't care if it's uh, uh, pictures, it could be drawings, I don't care, okay? But can you provide evidence for a dinosaur over a very long period of time, its transitional forms before this dinosaur uh, evolved into a bird. Obviously, a dinosaur is not going to give birth to a bird. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like the transitional forms that are between the um, between the uh, between the dinosaur and the bird. I don't even care if it's a cartoon drawing. Can I see your your evidence for that? And can you prove to me that that's science and not faith? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll actually show you a picture of Archaeopteryx. Um, this uh, little creature right here was Archaeopteryx. Um, he existed many, many, many moons ago. Um, and so one of the things that you're, you're asking is that, uh, well, how do I know that this petrified chicken in a rock um, looks like, I don't know, uh, this artist's uh, rendition here? And how do we know about his plumage? How do we know all this fancy stuff? Well, if you actually look at... Uh, this, you can actually see the outlines of the plumage, and there are other examples, and I've actually visited museums where you can see the plumage uh, come out here. I'm not sure if, if this is probably not the best resolution, but you can actually visually see the plumage emerging. And since we understand the succession of uh, how rocks are, are laid and how we can date those rocks, we can create a time scale or a timetable and understand the scale at which creatures in this level look like this, creatures in this level look like this, and again, this goes back to inferences. This creature just didn't pop out of nowhere. This creature came from generations past. So we look at the generation before this compared to this generation and then each successive generation and go, okay, here are creatures laid out literally in rocks to show how they have descended to a certain point and that there are better examples of how some of these creatures have uh, emerged. And uh, there's actually a, a talk uh, by a Neil Shubin who explains that there's this pattern that gets conserved literally over millions of years, a long bone, two bone, little bone. I mentioned it before in my PowerPoint, but you actually see this same pattern continue on. And that is one of the ways that we can discern whether or not uh, some of these structures are uh, homologous or not. So uh, on that note, I will go ahead and end my response there. Okay. If you want a little bit more time to say something, you can uh, regarding what you were saying. Oh, no, no, that, that's it. Okay. Um, uh, first, okay, I guess my one minute response to that, I got I to talk really fast now. Um, uh, I want the people to know that I'm not trying to like act drive nothing physically, like, you know, pull a phone out of his butt and whatnot and provide it on camera or whatnot. I understand he can't do it. I understand he falls underneath the um, museum according to their claims. My whole point of asking him this is to demonstrate to him that you have to believe what he's saying. You have to have the faith in what he's saying. It's not something that you can actually prove. You can you can imagine it. You can say that as a mechanism to, to try to understand how we may have evolved, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a fact. Uh, a fact or that is what he's even saying is true. So I wanted to point that out, but I also want to let people know that I'm not asking him to put a bone in front of the camera or anything like that. So that's why I was listening so hard to what he was saying regarding uh, what he was saying regarding the uh, imprint that he was looking at with the fossil. So uh, uh, right now, I'd like to thank you for answering my questions. You are very cordial by doing that, and uh, I'm ready to go into the fire. So G-Man wants Dragnet to prove to him that the scientific theory of evolution actually is scientific. As if everything we know about evolution, all the branches that support evolution, everything from 
archaeology, medicine, agriculture, everything, the edge of the earth, all of it. As if all those scientists just sits there in a room and pray, pray to believe that evolution is true. <laughs> uh, I gotta give credit to Dragnet for holding a straight face actually during this conversation because it's so strange really oh boy I mean G-Man isn't interested in truth or the fact or the science behind it all I mean if it were a fact that humans and chimps were cousins as we are G-Man's whole world view would crumble the bible would be false Jesus would be false his god wouldn't exist and he's terrified about that terrified and I can understand that of course I do but believing something is true doesn't make it true does it and denying reality doesn't make it false either does it anyway that's all folks take care